Imagine a character that embodies the concept of fear in its entirety. Someone who can instill fear into the very hearts and minds of brave, well-composed Shinigami like the noble Byakuya Kuchiki. During the Thousand Year Blood War arc, we are introduced to Sternritter F. Asnod. Bleach has a lot of memorable villains, but Asnod really leaves an impression upon us during the first Quincy invasion when he brutally defeats Byakuya Kuchiki to the point that he would have died if he wasn't helped by the Zero Division. In this video, I'm going to break down and analyze just what makes Asnod a truly fearsome and cruel character. I'll be studying everything that we know about his backstory as well as his role during Bleach's final arc. Make sure you stick around until the end of the video so that you understand why Asnod who was spreading fear was in fact somebody who was the most susceptible to this feeling of fear. So without further delay, this is my analysis of Yuhobak's most frightening Sternritter Asnod. <laughs> Asnod makes his debut appearance within chapter 494 of the manga and in the third episode of the brand new Thousand Year Blood War arc anime. He has the letter F engraved onto his soul by Yuhobak which manifests into a shrift ability the fear, a truly fearsome power that induces an unlimited amount of fear onto his opponents. Unfortunately Byakuya Kuchiki had felt the full force of his power during the first Quincy invasion, but I'm going to talk about that later on in the video. Asnod has a unique appearance amongst the diverse cast of Sternritter. He has long black hair with dark menacing eyes. His clothing is a personalized version of the Sternritter uniform as he is donning a long trench coat which is decorated by several buttons along with the dark mask that he wears which conceals the lower half of his face. Now I love how this mask has five spikes running down the middle of it. It's just a really cool design reminiscent of clothing worn by punk rockers from the 80s. In addition to this punk rock inspired look he has a few gruesome features incorporated into his design. For example, when we finally get a glimpse of his face under his mask in chapter 658, we see that he has a decaying mouth resembling an undead zombie from horror movies, with his teeth and gums exposed, giving him a very horrific appearance, which he ends up revealing to Rukia during their battle. Thankfully, Asnod is one of the Sternritter who we get to see plenty of during the final arc of the manga. Unfortunately, this isn't the case with all of the members of Yuhobak's army, but that's a topic for another video. In chapter 500, one, he reveals his beliefs about rational and irrational fear, stating that irrational fear is something that cannot be reasoned with, understood or overcome, unlike a rational fear. He is also seen to criticize his peers when he scolds Maskedy Masculine for not having waited for Renji to activate his Bankai so it could have been stolen. Instead, he had abruptly attacked Renji while he was in the middle of releasing his Bankai. In chapter 566, after the stolen Bankai are returned to their respective owners, we see how delusional as not can be when he arrogantly claims that Senbon Zakura was his own power and that he was feeling lonely after it was taken away from him. Asnod is revealed to be religious, demonstrating his belief in heaven and hell in chapter 570. We find out that one of his biggest fears is dying and winding up in hell. This scares him more than anything. His fear of hell stems from his belief that the dwellers of hell experience considerably more pain than the pain that is felt in the living world. This makes me look forward to seeing Asnod if the Bleach manga continues via a possible hell arc. In addition to this, he fears being told off by Yuhobak and having his very existence taken away from him. We know that this most likely would have ended up happening if Asnod had survived into the later sections of the arc. He would have also been hit by the light of Aswalan, just like how the other Sternritter who had stayed behind within the Soul Society were. Yuhobak of course had sacrificed the Sternritter in order to revive his elite soldiers, the Schutstaffel, who in fact were brought back to life and were revealed to be stronger than ever before. During battle, Asnod has a tendency to go on long tangents where he shares his philosophical beliefs with his opponents, and he also bores them to death via his long-winded explanations about the nature of fear. During these long speeches, he contorts his body like turning his head in a strange, intimidating manner, along with moving his eyes around in a creepy way. Asnod really enjoys making his opponents succumb to fear, especially those who are well composed and confident in themselves. He is seen to laugh uncontrollably in chapter 566 after he attempts to make Rukia feel fear. In addition to his love for tormenting others, he has a warped sense of humor, which is demonstrated after he sees Byakuya completely healed during the second Quincy invasion. He states to him that he appears to have lost weight, reminding him that he had gouged out his insides to the point of removing his entire stomach. He jokes by saying that he mustn't have been able to eat after their last battle. Now, with this basic overview of the sinister Stenrita, 
Twitter, let's break down all of the information that we know about Aznot's past which is revealed within the pages of the manga. Aznot's backstory is briefly shown to us at the start of chapter 570. This glimpse into his past is revealed moments before his death as he reflects back on his life. We see a bedridden, terminally ill Aznod who says to himself that breathing is agonizing. He feels pain during every waking moment, residing to the fact that he exists to endure agony, and such a life is just not worth living. Next to his bedside, we see a German Bible, which hints at his beliefs in Christianity, as well as his belief that Yuobak is the one true God, and his fears of hell. In addition to this, he reveals that he was taught that you either go to heaven or hell when you die, which had made him wonder whether if it is easier to breathe within heaven. He hopes that it's a place where his body or his head will not hurt. He then wonders if hell is more agonizing than the life that he has been given, because if it is, then he is afraid of it and he doesn't want to go to hell. While thinking this, he is approached by someone who asks him that it seems like he is among those who have survived. This individual is revealed to be Yuhabak, who tells him that he will bestow power upon him. After Asnod was granted the power of the fear, he had enlisted into the Wandenreich, becoming a Sternritter, and swearing his loyalty to Yuhabak, the man who had saved him from an agonizing existence. The next time that we see Asnod chronologically within the manga is in chapter 490 when he had received orders that he along with the other Sternritter are to gather at the Gate of the Sun in order to prepare for the invasion of the Serite, with the Wandenreich beginning their plan to take over the Soul Society. Asnod is revealed to have arrived within the Serite as he along with the other Sternritter create these pillars of blue reishi, giving them a very iconic entrance onto the battlefield. He immediately begins to cut down several low-ranking Shinigami in chapter 495. In comparison to the other Sternritter, Asnod comes across as being slightly more unhinged, as he mercilessly murders several Shinigami, impaling them with his fear-inducing spikes while also suspending them in the air, utterly frightening the other Shinigami who ask whether if he is a monster. The Shinigami reveal that their attacks have no effect, and whoever is hit by his spikes end up dying instantly. While they are dying, they all let out a blood-curdling scream, which indicates that they are experiencing some sort of intense fear. As not sinister appearance, along with his creepy abilities, is enough to frighten the remaining Shinigami who all lose their will to fight and just run away. Now this is despite one of the Shinigami who is reminding them that the duty of the Gotei 13 is not to preserve their own life, but it's to protect the Serite even at the cost of their lives. Just when all hope appears to be lost, Renji appears interrupting Asnod's cruel assault. He commends the Shinigami for reminding the others of their duty, telling him to step back because he will handle the Sternritter now. Renji quickly realizes that his attacks are ineffective against him, as he wonders if this is a unique defensive ability or if all of the Sternritter have a similar method of defense. Asnod utilizes Bloodveen in order to defend himself from Renji's attacks, as he realizes a pattern forms on his skin at the very moment that his attack is blocked. Just as Renji is about to speed up his attacks, he is ambushed by Mask. At the end of chapter 495, Byakya appears and he confronts Asnod himself. The battle between Byakya and Asnod truly begins in chapter 496, when Byakya explains to Renji that these are the individuals who had murdered Lieutenant Sasakibe. They had shed blood within the Serite without warning. There is no need to show this type of enemy any sort of pity. Asnod is then striked by Byakya who tells him not to move. Renji tells him that their swords are unable to penetrate through his defenses. However, Byakya successfully cuts up Asnod's hand, much to the Sternritter's surprise. With the battle continuing, Asnod successfully ends up stealing Byakya's Bankai, Senbonzakura Kageyoshi, thanks to his medallion that he uses. This is when Byakya learns that his Bankai wasn't in fact sealed, but it was rather stolen from him, as the sinister Asnod smiles menacingly following this realization. In chapter 501, we see that Byakya is wounded by his own ability as he ends up being pushed back. We learn that Byakya intends to draw out the Sternritter's ability while he advises Renji to observe and identify any weaknesses in their opponent. Byakya wonders if the thorns that Asnod is using to attack are covered with some kind of poison. Asnod asks whether if he has noticed yet, as he correctly deduces that Byakya was thinking that it could be poison, but it isn't. He reveals that he is feeling something that he had lost a long time ago, as he advises him to recall his memories, stating that when he had become a captain, he had gained strength. He started to defeat his enemies by simply overpowering them, so he hasn't had any need to feel the current sensation that he is feeling, this feeling that Asnod is instilling into his body. He reveals that the name of this sensation that is the most important thing in life is called fear. Renji is even shocked 
shocked at the notion of his captain feeling fear. It's truly an alien concept to these powerful Shinigami. However, Byakuya seems really surprised, like an icy cool wave of fear has blown over him. The Sternritter applauds Byakuya for having endured it for this long. Simply one strike of his thorns on an ordinary Shinigami was enough to have them screaming and dying from unbearable fear. Asnod reveals how his powers work as he explains that each individual manifests fear in a unique way after they are pierced by his attack. He gives a few examples, like being fearful of taking a step forward because something bad may happen, or being afraid of grasping, drawing, or swinging one sword, even being afraid of what an enemy is saying to you, being afraid that one word from the opponent may result in a terrible spell being cast upon you. He continues to give many examples, going as far as to say that one can manifest a fear of even breathing, resulting in them holding their breath and eventually dying. Here he sets a limitless boundary for the effectiveness of his ability, as he states that anything and everything is suspicious to a person who is feeling fear. Even the process of thinking becomes difficult to control. Fear supersedes all rational thought and reasoning, and it can cause one to lose themselves to their own mind. Despite all of this, Byakuya is enduring succumbing to fear thanks to the will of his strength alone, which is quite intimidating for Asna to accept. However, as much as he may try to resist it, he is already beginning to feel fear himself because the core of Byakuya's heart has already been affected by Asnod's ability. Asnod is striked by Byakuya but he blocks the attack. Byakuya thinks about fear as he wonders that it is absurd. There is no battle without fear. It is this very fear that he has overcome every time that he has survived from a life or death encounter. He says to himself that he has never repressed the feeling of fear. He has gained strength to move forward by accepting fear and conquering it in battle. However, despite his denial, Byakuya does in fact succumb to fear when he imagines a decaying Rukia which stuns him completely, which allows for Asnod to deliver his first critical blow of the battle. Asnod is surprised that Byakuya is still standing. He explains to him that fear can be overcome with experience. The stronger and more experienced you are, the harder it is for you to fall under the illusion that is cast by the feeling of fear. Incidentally, fear that originates from a rational cause is easy to overcome, because it can be stopped by force of will and experience alone. As long as there is a rational root cause of the fear, then it can be removed easily. Now true fear, which Asnod is in the business of dealing, stems from no rational cause, because it doesn't lead to an emotional response. Irrational fear causes an instinctive response, one cultivated through generations of evolution which have subconsciously taught us what to be fearful of in order to ensure our own survival. Asnod states that true fear has no cause, no limits, it is like a limitless amount of flies that are crawling all over your body. He tells Byakuya that there is no escape from instinct as he imagines his body covered in flies. Now Kubo excels with the imagery here as he depicts the flies crawling all over his face making us feel like they are on even our own body. The fearful Byakuya loses his composure as he strikes towards Asnod who evades the attack but then uses his own Bankai against him, cutting him down with a torrent of his own Zenbonzakura Kageyoshi petals. Byakuya falls to his knees as the menacing Sternritter towers over him. With blood beginning to pour out of his body, Asnod tells him that there is nothing that he can do. After all, it's foolish to think that he can overcome his own Bankai with his Shikai alone. Renji tries to save his captain, yelling how dare he use Zembon Zakura against him. However, the Sternritter defends himself from the attack with his Blutveen ability, as Renji is pushed back effortlessly. Byakuya is seen to have stood back up, but the Sternritter blasts him with a truly overwhelming wave of Zembon Zakura Kageyoshi, repeatedly attacking him until his body crashes into a nearby wall where the relentless barrage of attacks continues. Renji yells out for him to stop as he is about to activate his Bankai to help his captain but he is attacked by Mask the Masculine. Asnod scolds the Sternritter calling him an idiot because he was about to perform Bankai and they could have stolen another one if he wasn't so impatient. His battle against Byakuya ends as Byakuya is left utterly defeated, encased into a wall covered in his own blood as he apologizes to Rukia and Renji for having failed them. In chapter 506, we see Asuna join with Basby and Nanana as they try to attempt an ambush on head captain Yamamoto from behind, but they end up being scorched by the flames of Yamamoto, Zanpakuto, Ryujin, Jaka before they can even land an attack. We do eventually learn that he had in fact survived this attack, which was pretty much old man Yamamoto swatting away some flies, as he is seen in chapter 543 standing amongst the other Sternritter as he reacts in complete shock when Yuhabak announces that Uryu Ishida will be his successor. In chapter 554, Asnod is seen reacting to Byakuya
Sakya stolen Bankai being returned to him, and this is after the defeat of Kangdu and BG9. Following Rukia's return to the Soul Society, she doesn't sense the spiritual pressure of the other Shinigami. After struggling for a while to sense the spiritual pressure of both any Shinigami or Quincy, she considers to regroup with Renji and to attack the enemy's castle, but then her forearm is grazed by their sinister Asnod, as she quickly pulls her arm away, freaked out by this sensation. She calls out for the Stern Ritter to reveal himself, as he immediately taunts her by asking if she is afraid. He then repeatedly states that he is lonely, as he arrogantly questions where his Zembon Zakara has gone. Rukia immediately realizes that he is the Stern Ritter Asnod who had brutally beaten her older brother, and incidentally had stolen his Bankai. Removing his cloak, he reveals that he knows who she is also, the sister of Byakuya Kuchiki, as he demands that she tells her where he is. Rukia refuses to listen to him as he asks himself if Byakuya will appear if he kills Rukia. She says that he may well. He menacingly squints his eyes and summons several fear-inducing thorns which he fires towards her. She evades them but she notices that something black is leaking from the buildings that have been hit by his thorns, thinking that this must be his fear ability. When one of the thorns appears in front of her, she activates her Shikai Sode no Shirayuki which creates a barrier of ice in front of her. However, the thorn pierces through the ice as the Sternritter's black oozing fear seeps through it. He tells her not to bother because fear cannot be stopped by ice. Rukia ends up being infected by his fear as she freezes, dropping her Zambakdo. Asnod laughs, explaining how she cannot move and that it can't be helped, for this is the true nature of fear. His boasting is interrupted when an unfazed Rukia asks him what is it that he fears. She wonders if his ability having no effect on his opponent is a fear of his. Chapter 567 sees Asnod creepily contorting his body, telling her that it's not possible for his ability to be ineffective. She challenges him to raise those thorns against her again, stating that she will use the true form of Sode no Shirayuki against him. He fires several thorns against her, which she stops in their tracks by freezing them. Rukia says that she is now able to draw out the true power of a Zanbakdo. She had avoided his attack earlier because it takes time for her body to grow accustomed to her true power. She couldn't afford to be struck by his attack until now. Asnod reiterates that fear cannot be prevented with ice, explaining that his fear does not enter one's body via their wounds, but it dissolves and seeps into their skin upon making contact with it. Frankly, it's something that is impossible to be guarded against. He explains his belief that people have both objects of relief and fear. When they enter a place of relief and are asked about why they feel relieved, they answer nonchalantly just because. However, when they enter a place of fear, almost everyone will have a definitive reason for their fears. Examples include being afraid of the darkness, coldness, heights, confinement, pain, or even filthiness. They will be able to give you a long list of reasons for why they are feeling fear. This is because relief is tied to life, and all fears are tied to death. Most people may not be able to give you a reason to live, but you can definitely count on the fact that they will give you several reasons as to why they don't want to die. This isn't just limited to sentient beings with emotions, but to everything that is alive. All creatures purposefully evade death, which symbolizes their evasion to fear. Thus, Asnod concludes that we are instinctively created to avoid fear. So for this reason, it is not possible for her to be unaffected by fear as long as she is alive. Rukia totally agrees with him, but explains that she doesn't have life right now. Confused, Asnod demands an explanation, as she tells him that Sode no Shirayuki's true power allows her to lower her body temperature to below freezing, thus allowing her to freeze whatever it touches. The blade is literally an extension of her arm. Asnod refuses to believe this, lowering your body temperature below freezing causes all molecular motion to cease. Life cannot be sustained under such conditions. There is no way that she can remain alive in this state. Rukia surprisingly reveals that at this moment she is dead, and she has learned how to temporarily kill her body's functions via the control of a reishi. It's true, all molecular motion has ceased within her, so it's for that reason that the fear which has seeped into her body has stopped at the very surface of her body. He remains in disbelief saying that it's impossible, but Rukia appears beside him, cutting the stern ritter with a zombakdo, which is currently at minus 18 degrees. She explains that at this temperature, the blood within the body freezes, so blood can no longer flow from a cut, which is demonstrated by no blood being seen to pour out from Asnot's wound. She continues to explain that at minus 50 degrees, the moisture within the ground beneath her feet freezes, causing an ice quake, which unnerves Asnot even further. Rukia brings her body temperature down to minus 273.15 degrees. This is absolute zero, as she states 
states that she can only function at this temperature for 4 seconds. She quickly strikes Asnod, completely freezing his entire body as he thinks to himself whether if this is what it feels like to experience fear. Rukia's body temperature gradually returns back to normal, but she had slightly exceeded a 4 second time limit at absolute zero, which had resulted in a small cut forming on her thumb. Asnod can then be heard asking her if this is fear, as she turns around shocked to see that he has survived. He begins to transform into his holy form, proclaiming that this isn't fear, because the only thing that he fears is being punished by Yuhabak for failing in his duties. The fear of being punished by Yuhabak and having his body taken away from him is his ultimate fear. Compared to that, nothing that he experiences in battle in terms of pain and fear bother him in the slightest. His holy form called Fear of God is revealed, with his mask having disintegrated, revealing a rotten mouth with his teeth and gum exposed. Additionally, he now has a halo behind his head which is in the shape of the Wandenreich symbol. Additionally, we see blood profusely pouring out of both of his eyes which are creepily rolled upwards in this form. And lastly, we see his cloak which is stitched together in the middle like a surgical suture. This definitely amplifies his horrific appearance following his transformation. Rukia attempts to strike him but her body is slowing down as he tells her not to bother. She has been infected by his fear. He reveals that his holy form is able to instill fear into her body via her optic nerves, allowing him to bypass the fact that the cells in her body are frozen. This is because her nerves in her body have to be unaffected by her power, because the electrical impulses carried by the nerves are allowing her brain to communicate to her body, which explains why her body can function and interpret her senses despite her bodily function ceasing. While it is a very convenient way to bypass Rukia's power, it is nonetheless very big brain of Kubo to implement this strategy in order to effectively trap Rukia into a corner. He then summons a wall of fear-inducing eyes to surround them, stating that she can no longer escape his gaze. Everywhere that she looks, she sees him. Even closing her eyelids will do nothing, because fearful memories last within the heart for a long time. Similar to how past fears are reflected in the darkness of the night, a fear that you have seen once will resonate even stronger deep within the brain the more harder that one shuts their eyes. Rukia succumbs to fear with a stern ritter exclaiming that her mind will now be ripped apart by the fears that she has been trying to avoid. Before Rukia's fate is sealed, they are interrupted by the appearance of Byakia who cuts through his wall of eyes, arriving just in time to save his sister. Asnod is pleasantly surprised to see him. He immediately begins to taunt him, stating that he has been waiting for him, asking how are his insides after he had gouged them out. Considering his entire stomach was scraped out of his body, he must be feeling hungry from not having been able to eat. Even going as far as to tell him that he appears to have lost some weight since the last time that he had seen him. Rukia realizes that Asnod had been trying to lowride Byakia, as she warns him not to look into his eyes. The Sternritter says that it's too late as several eyes surround Byakia, seemingly trapping him into a fear-induced prison. However, the eyes immediately disintegrate. Asnod assumes that he must have surrounded the area with his Zenbonzakura Kageyoshi petals, as he expresses his longing for Byakia's Bankai. Byakia questions him by revealing to him that he has only used the Shikai of his Zombakdo as of yet, giving us a glimpse as to how powerful Byakia has become following his training. Asnod is shocked as Byakia states that after his Bankai was stolen, he was able to strengthen the bond with his Zombakdo, and it's all thanks to Asnod that he has become much stronger now. The enraged Sternritter begins to transform once again as the stitching down his body bursts as he repeatedly says that he will not kill him. He will never kill him. Instead, he will sink Byakia into an ocean of pain and fear where he will remain conscious with his mind still intact. He will keep him alive in order to torment him so that he can wish for his own death. His final form is revealed to be this oversized, grotesque version of himself that has a hideous bulging eye and a body that forms into a large mass on the ground. He appears to have formed from the stitched together cloak that had burst open in his last form. And we see the remnants of his last form like a piece of shedded skin hanging from his chin. He tells Byakya that it is over, but when Byakya reveals that it is Rukia who will defeat him, he exclaims that he has had enough of his mockery. Rukia activates her bankai Hakano Togami, which completely freezes Asnod's body as he disintegrates into thin air. In his final moments, he thinks back to his past, with how Yuobak had saved him. He says to himself that he is scared, as he questions if he is going to die and go to hell now. He asks Yuobak to forgive him and not to be angry with him, saying that he is scared of agony and pain, repeatedly saying to himself that he is scared as his body disintegrates into nothing, thus ending Asnod's role within the story, bringing an iconic end to his character who tried to instill fear into others. But in the end, Asnod was one of the most fearful beings
beings to have ever existed. Asnod's threat to Byakuya during this final transformation is very revealing. In the end, his ultimate power was to inflict onto others the very suffering and pain that he had endured throughout his life prior to him meeting Yuhobak, who had given him power and a new lease on life. With a functioning body, he was given the power of instilling fear into others in order to cause them pain, a power which complements the past life of Asnod. He intimately is well aware of both of these emotions and the devastating impact of them. Maybe he behaves the way that he does out of resentment and bitterness for the world and others, and it's for this reason that he sees it fit to inflict this same pain onto others, and we get to see a glimpse of his bitterness after he loses Byakuya's Bankai, with how he says that he is lonely and that he wishes that it was his Bankai. His anger that he directs towards Byakuya feels like jealousy. Byakuya has a perfect life, for he is a beloved noble, he has loving friends and family, and in addition to this, he has incredibly beautiful powers that contrast with Asnot's powers, which are deep rooted to his own experiences from the past, which he wishes to inflict onto others. It's like he is saying, well, I had to feel pain and fear all of my life. Now let me ruin your perfect life by making you experience exactly what I had to endure all of my life. Byakuya encapsulates this perfectly when he tells Rukia that what she sees reflected in Asnod is not fear. If she has no fear in her own heart, then she will be able to see how frightened Asnod is himself. And this explains why Asnod's feelings of fear are visually represented by the hideous forms that he takes up, which serve as a way to project his fear onto others. I really do wish that we get to see more of a glimpse of Asnod's past within the Thousand Year Blood War arc anime. It would be nice to see how he had become terminally ill. Was he born like this or was it Yuhobak who had punished him in the past? We know that Asnod is terrified of Yuhobak because he fears being punished by him. So it may well be true that Yuhobak had punished him during his backstory. Or on the other hand, Asnod may just fear disappointing Yuhobak because he doesn't want to lose the powers and strength that were gifted to him. Another fascinating aspect of Asnod is his fear of hell, which definitely opens up the possibility of his character returning for a possible Hell Arc manga continuation. It would be nice to have Asnod have a final battle in the story against Byakuya, I suppose just to satisfy those feelings of revenge that Byakuya may be feeling considering how he was disrespected by him during the first Quincy invasion. I guess we have now reached the point of the video where I hand over the discussion to all of you. What did you think of Asnod's character? He certainly lives up to his sinister reputation and he joins the long list of yet another complex and fascinating character crafted by Kubo who genuinely I wish that we got to see more of. I hope that the anime expands upon some details of his character like his backstory, relationship with Yuhobak, as well as his Christianity inspired beliefs. Definitely continue the discussion in the comments. I look forward to reading all of your thoughts on Sternritter F The Fear Asnod. Lastly, thanks for making it to the end of this video and I cannot wait to see you in my next Bleach character analysis video. If you enjoy my content, then you can support my channel through Patreon for as little as a dollar a month, or even through YouTube by becoming a channel member. You will gain access to exclusive channel perks and a Discord server which I frequently use. So become a member of my Zero Division and be the first to know about my upcoming videos. And once again, thank you for sticking around till the end of the video, and whatever you contribute will mean a lot to me.